Hope you're all doing well. I've got my team sheet here for the Arsenal game. West Ham against Arsenal. So we've got Declan Rice. He's the first name on the team sheet. Then we've got Ogbonna. Now, I'm putting Andre Yarmolenko. In he goes. Third name on the team sheet for me this Saturday. I know you always say, what about Socek? What about Jared Bowen? Well, I'll go on to Jared in a second. But my point remains, he's one of the first names down for me. He has to start at the Emirates for West Ham this Saturday. In my humble opinion. Now I'm aware. Let's get a disclaimer over and done with here. I'm aware. I'm an Andre Yarmolenko fanboy. I really like him. I think he's a fantastic player. And in this video, I'm going to try and justify that a little bit. And why I think he has to start on Saturday. Overall though, his transfer hasn't really worked out, has it? He's been injured for far too long. It's been what you would call somewhat of a near disaster so far. I wouldn't call him a flop. Because that would insinuate when he has been fit, he's been rubbish. Jack Wilshere's the flop. We haven't seen him. Um, Andre Yarmolenko we have. And when we do see him, I love what I see. Hence this video. Hence these thoughts, opinions. The first season he only started five games. It's not enough really. Um, last season he got a few more minutes on the pitch. But I'll tell you what, in both seasons, I, th I feel like he's contributed. He not quite earned his wages. But he scored goals, he scored important goals, which earned the club millions. Bear in mind the win against Chelsea this season just passed was massive in terms of just staying in the Premier League. You could argue that goal was potentially worth 80 million to West Ham. Some would argue. Uh, two years ago, when he arrived, when he came here two years ago, we did our season preview. One of the questions was, which per what signing are you looking forward to seeing the most? Now, that was when we had our 100 million um, summer speed. Felipe Anderson came in, Diop came in, Balbuena, Fredericks, Fabianski, Sanchez, Wilshire. Um, and Yarmolenko was the one I picked out because I like him. I liked him a lot and I was looking forward to seeing him under Pellegrini. I thought he'd be a success under Pellegrini. And I would argue when he was fit, he was a success. The question isn't his ability here. The question is purely his injury, his injuries. He's injured far too often, but... When he is fit, I think we need to be playing him as much as possible. Going by what we've seen last season and so far this season, arguably, I think when he's fit, we need to utilise him. I, I don't think he'll be available for more than 20 games this season. Half the season at best. But I'll tell you what, when he's fit for those half games, the only issue we'll be using him, I think we've got one hell of a player there. I think we've got one a weapon that we have to utilise the most. When you look around, I think the problem between us and a lot of other clubs at the minute, and this goes back to last season as well, and this is what scares me, we don't have much what I would call match winners. Players that will grab the game by the scuff of the net and earn you points, get you goals. Mark Ronatovic was one of them. Since he's left, I don't feel we've got one. I think Andre Yarmolenko is one. You look at Villa, they've got Jack Grealish. I'm trying to pick teams that's down the bottom of the table now, but Villa with Grealish is the main one. Relegation battle, however, they've got that player. Crystal Palace have got Zaha. They've got these big players who you give them the ball, they can make something happen, and they can get you points. Jan Malenko is that player for me. I thought he looked good against Newcastle when he came on, simply because he just carries a goal threat. Prior to his substitution, I felt like we were almost just crossing the ball and hoping that Socek can get on it, or it falls for someone, and we somehow get it in the back of the net. I didn't feel there was much creativity, didn't feel there was much conviction in the final third. And it's thoroughly frustrating to watch, because we've got the ability. Yarmolenko comes on, and as soon as he comes on, I just feel more confident that we're going to score. I feel like we've got someone on the pitch now that's going to make something happen. Someone on the pitch that can... 25 yards out from goal, he's got their whole defence and goalkeeper alert. No one else really gives me that feeling at West Ham. There's no one else that can shoot from 25 yards regularly and cause the other team problems. You've got players like Antonio, Snodgrass, Rice. They will hit it from 20, 25 yards. They're not very good at it. It rarely hits the target. You've got other players that probably will hit the target, but... They just don't pull the trigger very often. Anderson, Lanzini, Alaire. I'd back them all to make the keeper force a save. But I don't, I'm not really confident that they're going to shoot in the first place. Jarmelenko offers both. And if the first one's awful, goes 10 yards wide, he'll have a second shot. Now, if that doesn't work, he'll have a third shot. You get my point here. I think he's got a bit of arrogance about him. 
And I think when you're lacking confidence as a team collectively, which I think we were on match day one, you need players who aren't as affected by confidence. Felipe Anderson's a perfect example here. Now on against Charlton in the first half, I stand by this. I don't think he played well. I, I don't. I did not see anything different from Felipe as to what I've seen in previous games gone by. I thought he was pretty anonymous. I don't think he was getting involved much. I thought Lanzini was looking really good and neat and tidy. I thought Cullen was looking neat and tidy. I thought Snodgrass, Ramalenko, I thought they were all looking good. Anderson wasn't. However, second half, I thought Felipe Anderson was tremendous. Running down that left wing, step overs. Um, he got his goal, but not only did he get his goal, he did the pass to set up Lanzini to set up his goal. It was a fantastic pass as well. But for me, I've always thought Felipe Anderson plays well when West Ham are winning. West Ham don't win because Felipe Anderson plays well, if that makes sense. I'm just not confident we will see... Uh, nil nil. I'm not confident Anderson will turn up. When we start winning, then I think Anderson turns up because, I don't know, because he's got more room on the pitch or just because he feels a little bit better, a little bit less pressure maybe because we're already winning. I don't know. But when that final whistle stops, I feel like Anderson's confidence stops. We start again on the next game. Yarmolenko, I've never ever felt some sort of confidence issue with. I've always felt he comes out there, he backs himself. If he, if footballers were allowed to bet on football, I bet you he would be in that bookies every morning, swacking down money on Andre Yarmolenko to score that day. And I love that about him. You need that in a player sometimes. Now, I'm, I'm aware I'm blabbering here, but that's what you do in a video, isn't it? David Moyes has got a bit of an issue. And that is starting Bowen and Yarmolenko. It's a problem. They both like the same position. The right on a front three. That's the. I think that's where you get the best of Yarmolenko. And I think it's where you get the best of Jared Bowen. However. Well, so far I'm not seeing David Moyes come up with a plan to play both. Usually Yarmolenko comes on for Jared Bowen. But on Saturday he came on. And Bowen stayed on the pitch, but went over to the left, and it just compromises Bowen a little bit, a, a little bit, a lot. It compromises Bowen a lot. If Moyes can find a way of getting the best out of them both in the same starting eleven, tell you what, he'll come up with a, a scary formula for oppositions. I would fancy seeing West Ham with a one hundred percent Bowen and a one hundred percent Yarmolenko. Between them, there's goals, there's creativity, there's danger. They're probably then going to place close to each other you do not want to be in that side of the pitch if you're a defender what the answer is i don't know i think i know what the answer isn't and that's Yarmolenko on the right because he's got defensive duties i don't like seeing him with defensive duties one he's quite slow uh, he'll run back he's just not very good at it um i don't think he wants to do it i was impressed against charlton i thought he tracked back more than normal but I thought it was an easy game. It was easy to look good against Charlton. It was easy to trap back against them. Against Arsenal is a completely different thing. Because especially they're going to play three at the back and therefore have a wing back. So he might end up having to chase the wing back on occasions and make the Niles. He's not going to do that. So where does he play Andre Yarmolenko? On Saturday, I would like to see him with as little defensive responsibility as possible. I would like to see him as striker. Although... I'm not against seeing him, as, seeing him as the actual striker on occasions. In Mark Noble's role is where I play Andre Yarmolenko. I know you may think, hang on a minute, he's got to drop into the midfield three or something. I think he probably could do that. But when you're in there, you're sort of occupying space more than anything. Mark Noble isn't asked to make tackles. Mark Noble doesn't do that many tackles. He's simply... He's just in the way. He stops the centre midfielder from running through the middle of the pitch. That's all you've got to do. You've just got to be like a, a barricade. I'll make your opponent play the ball. I think that's what he's got to do there. Whereas out on the wing, I think you've actually got to do a lot more running and a lot more tackling. Um, I like to see him in that number 10 role. I would back Yarmolenko to link up with Antonio or Sebastian Allier. I would back him to create chances for the striker. I'd back him to go and play relatively close to someone like if Yarmolenko's there Bowen's going to be on the right I would back him to then move over to the right side of the pitch on occasions so that they're only 10 yards apart one thing that frustrates me watching West Ham on Saturday is when Bowen's on the right and Fernandes is on the left there's big gaps between them and Noble Mark Noble's always in the middle of the pitch 
on Saturday, I'm sorry, on Tuesday with Lanzini in there, I saw a big difference. I'm aware it's Charlton though, but positioning on the pitch is positioning on the pitch. Lanzini was getting close to Yarmolenko. He he was no more than ten yards away when Yarmolenko was in possession. He was coming over saying, "Look, let's let's do these little triangles, these short passing." I just don't see that when Mark Noble's in number ten role, and I think Yarmolenko would offer you that as well. Let's talk about game-changing moments, game-changing goals. I like my stats, so you're going to have to bear with me here. But last season, Jan Milenko scored the match-winning goal in two games. And that is, if you win 3-1, he's whoever scores the second. So he got the match-winning goal against Manchester United. We won 2-0. He got the first one. And also Chelsea, the last minute, he came on. We won 3-2. It's not that much, two games, is it? But we only won 10. So a fifth of the games... Yarmolenko went and got the match winner. It's not bad for someone who barely plays, is it? He's averaging, in terms of minutes, he's averaging a goal every two games last season, which I think is really good for West Ham. I think that's brilliant. I think you have to utilise this. You have to utilise this guy who's possibly past his peak, but I still think he's one of our best players, if not our best player, especially when it comes to technique and so on and so forth. Saturday night... I hope David Moyes can come up with a winning formula that has Bowen and y- Yarmolenko in that team. I don't want to see one of them on the left. I don't want to see Colin Solchek and Rice playing midfield and then Yarmolenko stuck out in the wing. You're going to kill him. You're going to throttle him out there. He needs... He needs to fly, Yarmolenko. I would actually build our attacking shape around Yarmolenko this Saturday. I think he's that good when he's fit. He might not be fit in two weeks. He might not be fit in three weeks. I don't know. I'll worry about it in two weeks and three weeks' time. But for this weekend, when he is fit, he'd be one of my first names on the team sheets. And I would probably back him to cause Arsenal's defence something to worry about. I think we would do the review and speak positively about Yarmolenko's contribution, providing he doesn't have much defensive duties to do. If he does have those, this is my disclaimer, by the way, if he, he is on the wing... I wouldn't expect him to have a good game. I would expect him to struggle defensively. I would expect him to be knackered by the hour mark. Because he, he looked knackered by the hour mark against Charlton, didn't he? But, all said and done, we don't have much game changes at West Ham. I don't have much faith in players scoring goals and winning games for us. I've got that in Andre Yarmolenko. And it's a good feeling, a different one. Anyway, I'm going to shut up now. That's why I want to see Andre Yarmolenko start. We've got the match preview tonight. Um, obviously, I'm not going to go into the Yarmolenko thing, but I wanted to really go into detail about it because I feel quite passionate about it, actually. I feel quite excited. I will be excited if he starts on Saturday night. Am I confident he will? No, I'm not. I'm not. I don't think he will start. I hope he does. But I'll be doing the PVG tonight with Gonzo, so pop along for that if you want to. Drop a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new around here, and I shall catch you in a bit.